for the following functions. Find the inverse function, check it, and then find the derivative of the inverse function. We're going to start off with f of x equal to 3x minus 2. So if I want to find the inverse function, I'm just going to rewrite it f of x is y. We're going to switch x and y, and then I'm going to solve for y. So when I do this, we're going to push the 2 to the other side, divide by 3, and then I get y equals x plus 2 over 3. To check, I can go either f of f inverse of x or f inverse of f of x. So f of x is just 3x minus 2. If I put f inverse in there, think of it this way. We have a box, 3 box minus 2. And now if I put f inverse of x in, for where x was, we're sticking that into the box. So I have 3 times x plus 2 over 3 minus 2. 3's cancel, 2's cancel, I get to x. So that checks the inverse. Now for the derivative, okay, of course we could just take the derivative of this and we're done. That's no problem. The point here is to illustrate the rule for the derivative, which is given by the derivative of the inverse function is given by, you put 1 over the derivative of your original function, and then you evaluate at the inverse function at your point. So this is what I really want to get across. So by direct calculation, we see that we have f prime of x is 3, and f inverse prime is 1 third. So let's check the rule. By the rule, it says, we're going to take 1 over f prime evaluated f inverse of x. Now note, f prime is a constant, so it doesn't matter what I stick in here, 3 is going to come out. Could put 1,000 in there, could put 10 in there, I could put x, square root of x, whatever you want, 3 comes out. So this bottom part is going to be a 3, and so we get that the derivative is 1 third, which agrees with what we get when we do it by hand. All right, let's do another one. So I'm going to do f of x equal to square root of x minus 3. Okay, so we're going to do our usual trick of we switch x and y and then solve for y. So we switch, square both sides, move the 3 over, and then I get y equal to x squared plus 3. And then I have to be a little bit careful. If you notice, the original graph of this is this picture here. When I flip in the line y equal to x to get the graph of the inverse function, we're only using half of this parabola. So we're going to throw in also x bigger than or equal to 0, just to be persnickety. We do the check. Here I'm going to do, again, f on f inverse of x. So I just take my original function, I put a box around x, and then we're just going to stick the inverse function into the box. So I have x squared plus 3, minus 3, drops the square root of x squared, and then I wind up with an x. Okay, let's move on to the derivative of the inverse. So let's first calculate what our derivatives are going to be by hand. Okay, if I take the derivative of my original function, this is x minus 3 to the 1 half. I bring my 1 half down, subtract 1, and then derivative of the inside is just 1, so we don't have to worry about that, so the chain rule isn't too complicated. And then cleaning this up, it's going to give me 1 over 2 radical x minus 3. The derivative of my inverse function is just 2x. So let's see that the rule works. So the rule says 1 over f prime of f inverse of x. 1 over f prime, let's take a look. If I had 1 over 2 square root of x minus 3, 1 over this is just going to turn into 2 radical x minus 3. So I'm going to put a box around the x, and then I'm going to stick f inverse into that. So that goes in as x squared plus 3. The 3's cancel square root and the x squared cancel to just give me plain old x. And you notice we get the promised 2x out from our hand calculation.